thing to come into the facility to know that somebody else with just as serious of a disease state may be treated by a medication that's coming off of one of our production lines. The journey to save lives and stop COVID-19 starts in Indiana, the facility that's helping provide the country with more vaccine and how you can be part of the team. So how long do vaccines work to protect you from COVID-19? What we're finding out and the guidance from healthcare workers. Looking back at this in the future and hopefully this will be something we can look back on sooner rather than later is just something we're gonna be really proud of. Pharmacy students at one local university are helping vaccinate their peers. The effort to get as many college students vaccinated as possible before the end of the semester. Welcome into WRTV News at 6. Tonight, we're digging deeper into Indiana's role in helping to end the COVID-19 pandemic. And what we have found out is your help is needed to make sure millions of people get vaccinated. Hundreds and hundreds of jobs. That's what the hiring manager at a Bloomington plant producing COVID vaccine is looking to fill tonight. WRTV reporter Nikki Dementri explains why Catalan Bloomington needs to fill so many positions and what type of employee they are looking for. It's been significant, so the growth of the site has just been tremendous. Catalan in Bloomington plays a pivotal role in the COVID-19 vaccine supply chain. Publicly, it's been announced it manufactures both Moderna and Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccines. We had to ramp up, ramp up quickly uh, to bring on staff and get them trained and ready. So when the vaccines were ready to be produced, we had efficient and effective staff that can make these life-saving medications, along with many, many other products that I can't speak about. Pre-pandemic, the biologics facility in Bloomington had around 1,000 employees. Today, it's more than 2,800, and there's even more spots to be filled. How many employees are we looking at adding in the next coming months? So that's a really hard question to answer. I have hundreds and hundreds of jobs open at this time. Passion, commitment, and attention to detail. HR Director Christy Fallon says the company is hiring across a variety of jobs from the production line to the lab. It's really important for employees that join us to understand the mission and connect to the mission of, of serving patients and taking care of our patients every single day. It's the same mission that brought Indiana native and IU grad Ann Leonard to the Bloomington plant in August 2020. I knew there were big and exciting things going to be happening uh, at the Catalan site here in Bloomington, and I wanted to be a part of it. The director of quality says it's been an intense time, but also an extremely rewarding one. I think that the site feels this enormous responsibility uh, to deliver the vaccine to the to the country and the world. Um, and it's it's so cool to be a part of that. And safety, she feels, is a top priority every day at the Bloomington facility with mask usage, social distancing and the like. I've never um, worked on products that so many of the people I know personally are taking the products that are coming out of the facility where I'm working. It's that passion and drive to help that translates out of the office too. My parents signed up for their vaccine in Florida. They received Moderna and it brought tears to my eyes to know that my team, my employees, you know, in Bloomington made that medication that saved potentially saved my family, but at minimum gave me the chance to hug my mom and dad again. Working for you. And I'm thankful to my team at locally in Bloomington and the Moderna team every day for what they did for my family. Nikki Dementri, WRTV. The hiring process is ongoing at Catalan. Fallon says these jobs are careers and mentions the site also provides in-house training. When does this ongoing demand end? Does it end? I don't know if it's going to end anytime soon. Uh, we continue to have a very a strong facility. Our, we hear from our clients that, you know, our people make the, the facility. We have a link to their job postings on our website at WRTV.com. Both Moderna and Pfizer vaccines give protection against COVID-19 for at least six months, according to new research. But experts say that it's possible protection could be even longer than that. We spoke with local experts on that topic. Clinically, people vaccinated as part of the Moderna and Pfizer trials continue to do well and avoid infection. Dr. Cole Beeler with IU Health says that interval will continue to be updated as time goes on. Beeler says it seems like immunity provided through the vaccine lasts much longer than the immunity of those who have caught COVID-19 naturally. He fully expects 
this research to continue to come out as the months progress so it can be determined exactly when vaccine stops working. Pfizer has also shown to be extremely protective in places where there is high variant spread, specifically in South Africa. There's always been this concern in the back of our minds that the vaccine might not work as well against some of these variants. And this is the first kind of real life suggestion, even though it is just a press release and it's not a paper formally, but this is the first real life suggestion that uh, says that the immune system in all of its different facets uh, is able to protect against the virus maybe when antibody isn't the only thing around. Dr. Beeler says the latest news about the two vaccines is very promising for all the people who have been vaccinated. And tonight you can attend a virtual panel discussion with health professionals about the COVID-19 vaccine. Director and Chief Medical Officer of the Marion County Public Health Department, Dr. Virginia Kane, and many others will address myths, concerns, and truths about the vaccine. The discussion starts at 7 p.m. That's less than an hour from now. To participate, visit the website mdwise.org slash COVID. If you are 16 years or older, you can register to get a COVID-19 vaccine in Indiana. To sign up for an appointment, go to the website ourshot.in.gov, or you can dial 211 on your phone. When we started P1 year, we had no idea there would be a pandemic coming up, so this was a perfect time to put our skills to the test. Butler University pharmacy students are helping vaccinate their fellow Bulldogs. The university is making it easier for its students to get vaccinated, hosting a clinic just for them for the next three days. They are partnering with the state to vaccinate as many students as possible before the end of the semester. WRTV Stephanie Wade gives us a look at the effort taking place inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. Well, the students are spaced out. They're waiting for their shot to receive the COVID-19 vaccine right here on campus. The Indiana State Department of Health making enough vaccine available to vaccinate all Butler students if they want to. We've rallied over 300 volunteers from our students, faculty, staff and alumni so that we can do the monumental task of vaccinating 3000 of our students in only three days. And of the 300 volunteers helping vaccinate students today are current Butler pharmacy students. I didn't think I'd be here giving vaccines during a pandemic, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> when our dean reached out to us and said this is our chance to get our campus back, we were so excited to put our skills to help. Pharmacy students take a class their first year of the program specializing in giving vaccines. That allows them to practice anywhere in the state. They are students, but they are certified vaccinators. So they are actually more like vaccinators who happen to be students. I think it's really cool that they have the experience and this is like great exposure for them too. So, you know, it really is just like good for everyone all around. Looking back at this in the future and hopefully this will be something we can look back on sooner rather than later. It's just something we're going to be really proud of. Butler will be giving students the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine through Friday, then the second dose the first week of May, right before commencement ceremonies. We had to think about making sure our students could get both doses before they went home for the summer. A push in the right direction, and I just am really excited that we can all kind of hang out again once this all happens. And it's I'll get my second dose right two days before I graduate. So I'm excited for that because then it'll be like I can get it to my family and I can see my grandparents again. Any remaining supply, they tell me, will be available to faculty and staff. You know, anybody who's worried about where our health care is going just needs to stand in this gym for about five minutes. The future of health care is all around this room and the future could not look any brighter. Stephanie Wade, WRTV. At this time, Butler University is not requiring students to get vaccinated for COVID-19. The university is, however, highly encouraging students to participate in the on-campus vaccination program. Rose Hillman Institute of Technology in Terre Haute announced today it will host a state-approved COVID-19 vaccination center on campus for students and employees. Rose Hillman says they should have enough doses of the Pfizer vaccine for every student and employee to be fully vaccinated by the end of the spring quarter. First doses will be administered Wednesday, April 14th through Friday, April 16th or April 19th and April 20th. Second doses will be available from May 10th to May 14th. And as of right now, Butler University, IU, Purdue, and Ball State are all planning on resuming mostly normal campus operations starting in the fall of 2021. That means in-person classes, normal campus living, much like it was pre-pandemic. However, each school said if circumstances change with the pandemic and they need to change that plan, they will be ready to adapt. And none of the schools have indicated yet that they will require students to be vaccinated, but that could also change. 
It is a storm team alert. Heavy rain and storms moving through much of central Indiana today. This is video of the Martinsville area from Jesse Kaufman. And we're not done yet. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory shows you what's happening now. Kevin, this is amazing video that we're seeing. Uh, heavy rainfall, and it wasn't the only spot. Up in uh, Brownsburg, we had some pea-sized hail to go with the downpours, and uh, the rain starting to calm down a bit now. Let's take a look at the radar. Notice the western half of the state all is calm, and as we go to the south, what I'm doing is backing this up a couple of hours so you can see the cluster of thunderstorms that rolled through Bedford, then into Brown County through Nashville. That has since weakened, and we have these other little pop-ups that will continue north of Columbus to Shelbyville. To the north we go, and again, the trend, it's a downward trend for coverage and intensity. Any isolated thunderstorm that lingers may have a wind gust to 30 miles per hour. Uh, hail's becoming more unlikely, and I think we'll wind it all down by 9 o'clock. The sun sets, of course, at 8.15. Love this graphic. It just shows you through the middle, we're quite cool. It's the edges of the state that are warmer. Lower 80s along the Wabash River, Lafayette to Terre Haute, while Indy sits at 70. A warm overnight tonight. Temperatures stay in the 60s all night long. As we mentioned, Mark did, we're not done with the rain yet. So we'll talk about when it returns and your weekend forecast as well. Mark. Kevin, thank you. A woman who drove her minivan through Black Lives Matter protesters on Monument Circle last year has pleaded guilty to one criminal charge. Diane Goble formally entered a guilty plea Tuesday to a charge of criminal recklessness committed with a deadly weapon. Prosecutors say Goble struck at least two protesters with her minivan in June of 2020. The incident was captured on video by protesters and by surveillance video from businesses in the area. Under her plea deal, Goble will serve probation and perform community service. She must also pay more than $2,600 in damages to two people who were injured. Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita has announced he is investigating five massive tech companies. They are Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, and Twitter. The Attorney General's office says Rokita is investigating allegations that those companies have deleted or obscured material reflecting a politically conservative point of view. Rokita says this kind of practice prevents people from making informed choices. Just censorship of people's thoughts and ideas and words it's censorship of products. Amazon uh, have, has books they've taken down. Uh, the Google Play Store and Apple have apps that they're not allowed, allowing to be sold. And then there's the censorship of ideas as well. Attorney General Rokita is also investigating attorney Vanita Gupta. Rokita says Gupta encouraged the companies to censor conservative views. The Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department is asking for your help in finding a 71-year-old man believed to be missing. IMPD says John Gross was last seen on Tuesday just after 2 o'clock in the afternoon on 3500 block of North Riley Avenue. That's on the northeast side, by the way. He was last seen wearing a blue shirt, blue jeans with red, white, and gray shoes. Gross has dementia and may become combative if confronted. He also is blind in his right eye. If you have information on his whereabouts, contact the IMPD Missing Persons Unit. That number is 317-327-6160 or call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. A move that could help save the lives of pets in one county. It may just look like a new building, but what it can provide could be a game changer. Insulation. From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. Welcome back today. The ribbon cutting for a long awaited project in Hamilton County today. Officials cut the ribbon on the new Fishers facility that now houses the Humane Society for Hamilton County. It is a $12 million, 40,000 square foot building off of Hague Road in Fishers. It replaces an older facility in Noblesville that had just 8,000 square feet. The Humane Society says the extra space will allow them to hold more animals and to save more lives. And that's not all. So we have so we have a new education center where we'll be able to host school and scouting groups, which is something we didn't have at all in the previous space. We have a fully outfitted medical center. Um, we have an operating room. We've hired our first full time veterinarian, which is amazing for us. We'll be able to do a lot of things in house, which will save us a lot of money. 
The Humane Society for Hamilton County officially opens in Fishers tomorrow, April 8th. Doors will open for adoption starting at noon tomorrow. This week you may notice a smoother drive around Indianapolis. That's because the Indianapolis Department of Public Works and contractors are filling potholes and strip patching roads since temperatures are so warm. If you see crews working, give them space. You should also watch out for orange barrels and cones while you're driving. That's a sign that you should slow down and pay extra attention. And don't forget to plan now because INDOT expects the North Split downtown will close for 18 months beginning May 22nd. It's for a $350 million reconstruction project on Indiana's second busiest interchange. And a seven-day road closure will likely begin April 12th at 146th Street and State Road 37 in Hamilton County. This closure is from Harriman Boulevard to Tom Wood Way and Monday Drive. WRTV's Hiring Hoosiers initiative focuses on alerting you to open job opportunities, and we are doing that now with the job feed. The Jack Laurie Group has just posted eight new positions to the job board at HiringHoosiers.com. They need cleaning associates, a showroom designer, a residential project manager, and more. Stoops Freightliner Quality Trailer has jobs at its facility in Anderson. They are looking for medium and heavy-duty truck technicians. Express Employment Professionals needs a product inspector in Indianapolis. You would measure produced items, weigh those items, and document your findings. Pay is $13 an hour. The Neurodiagnostic Institute and Advanced Treatment Center in Indianapolis is holding a hiring event on Saturday, April 10th. You can join in person or virtually from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Neurodiagnostic Institute has several job opportunities for you. Learn more by finding this post on the Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page. Kevin. We had those downpours today. You need three things to build the thunderstorm, moisture, lift, and instability. And we had just enough of each to build those thunderstorms. Tracy up in Howard County sent this picture. You could probably see off in the distance the sheets of heavy rainfall if it didn't move right over you. Thunderstorms developed as we warmed up today, but you may have noticed right away the humidity was up a bit. And that's one of the building blocks, the moisture that we talked about, needed for thunderstorms. From south of Muncie, Newcastle to Shelbyville, down to Seymour, that's the main area of rain now. And as we mentioned, uh, there are isolated thunderstorms. You may still have some gusts and potentially some small hail. But I think the coverage and the overall intensity of these storms will continue to diminish. They're sitting now just to the south of Shelbyville. They will cross over Interstate 74 southeast to Shelbyville and continue to move northeast in toward Henry County. Well, we're seeing it now. The trend for these two wind down early tonight. Tomorrow and Saturday, two more opportunities for rain and some thunderstorms. The overall trend unveiled, as you'll see in the seven-day forecast, is for temperatures to be on the cooler side. The rain chance tomorrow, pretty high. The same on Saturday. Rain chances diminish Sunday. If you have outdoor activities, you're trying to get some yard work done, second half of the weekend may be your best bet. A marginal or low risk for severe storms does clip the eastern half of the state tomorrow from lower Michigan down through the eastern half of Indiana. And then it curves, as you can see, through eastern Kentucky, Tennessee, down into the Gulf Coast states. Damaging wind and some small hail would be the main threats from these storms. As far as our rainfall potential, we may see anywhere from half an inch to an inch by the time we get into the weekend. Having a little data problem here, you notice the winds aren't showing up, but let me just tell you, the winds tomorrow, again, will gust over 20 miles per hour. Temperatures, they're in the 60s tomorrow, cooler than today. We almost hit 80, 79 was the high temperature. Tomorrow we're in the 60s. As we get to Friday, just a touch warmer because we'll be dry on Friday. 73 for the high temperature. We'll need that dry day because rain chances will return as we get to Saturday. Likely we'll see showers and some thunderstorms. 62 on Sunday. We dry out, we warm up on Monday. Mark? Kevin, thank you. We are a little more than a month away from the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500, but there will be some action at the trek over the next couple of days. I want to give you a live look at the IMS right now. It's pretty quiet at this point. But tomorrow and Friday, IndyCar Series drivers and teams will participate in an open test. 32 car and driver combinations are scheduled to participate in the two-day session. Tomorrow, testing is happening from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. And Friday, it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The test is closed to the public.
And today the Indianapolis Motor Speedway tweeted this. This is a big Aero McLaren truck driving along 16th Street just before testing begins tomorrow. Just more proof that we are getting closer and closer to the month of May. The Indianapolis 500 is scheduled for Sunday, May 30th, but it's still unclear how many fans will be able to attend this year's race. As you recall, the 2020 Indy 500 happened without fans and was run in August instead of May. The Purdue University men's basketball team is losing another assistant coach. Steve Lutz has been named as the head coach of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. This is happening after another Purdue assistant, Micah Shrewsbury, took the head coaching job at Penn State. So head coach Matt Painter has a couple of spots on his bench to fill. We'll be right back with Kevin Gregory's final look at weather right after this. Com. The view in Bloomington in Monroe County after the showers and thunderstorms still looks a little intimidating, but no rain knocking on the door there. Let's check out the radar. Where is the rain located now? A little heavier showers and thunderstorms near Shelbyville, just crossing Interstate 74. If you're headed southeast to Shelbyville, you'll pass through those. More rain will go up toward Newcastle. Tomorrow, temperatures, they'll stay in the 60s. We don't flirt with the 80 like we did today. And rain in the morning, some thunderstorms in the afternoon. A couple could be on the strong side, eastern half of the state especially. Mark and Amanda. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you for joining us for WRTV News at 6. It's been great having you along. And join us again for the News at 7. But first, it's World News Tonight with David Muir.